Our interview with the mother and widow of Tyler Skaggs, the MLB star who died in a tragic drug accident back in 2019. A former LA Angels employee was sentenced this week to 22 years for giving Skaggs counterfeit pills, and his family is now speaking out for the first time. Eva Pilgrim is in Los Angeles with the story. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, George. Tyler Skaggs was living his dream, playing baseball for the team he grew up cheering for. His wife and mom say they knew he was dealing with pain, but they had no idea he was taking pills until that call that changed their life forever. I loved him so much. We had a love that was so special. This morning, Carly Skaggs and Debbie Hetman, the widow and mother of Los Angeles Angels pitcher Tyler Skaggs, telling their story on camera for the first time since he died after taking fentanyl-laced oxycodone while on the road with his team in 2019. Yeah, I couldn't believe it was true. I, I mean, that day still haunts me. Medic 41, check 41, respond, medical emergency, Hilton, South Lake Town Square. Skaggs was just 27 years old when he was found unresponsive in his hotel room in Texas. How did you guys find out what happened to Tyler? Carly called me uh, and told me, and I, I was, wow, I was, I could not believe it. I was driving in my car, and uh, I got a call from the general manager. I knew it was bad. I didn't want to hear what he was going to tell me. I knew my life changed forever in that moment. Skaggs was in the prime of his life. He and Carly had just gotten married in December. Tyler Skaggs taking the mound for the Angels. He was on a mission to start 30 games that season. His family said despite injuries, he was well on his way. But then he took that laced pill. An autopsy report revealing Tyler died after choking on his vomit with a dangerous combination of fentanyl, oxycodone, and alcohol in his system. At the point that you found out that there were pills involved, were you surprised? Yeah, that was the last thought that crossed my mind. I agree with her. I agree. We, uh, it didn't even cross my mind, actually. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any idea that he was taking pain pills? Not a clue. On Tuesday, Eric Kay, the former communications director for the Angels, was sentenced to 22 years in federal prison for providing Tyler with the drugs that led to his death. His sentence, two more years than the minimum. The judge saying it was because of these prison phone calls. Hope people realize what a piece of he is. Well, he's dead, so him. Prosecutors also accused Kay of being in the room when Tyler choked, but not trying to save him. Do you wish that he would have done something? That haunts me all the time. It th I, to think that somebody is in the room and doesn't render help to your, to your child, to your son, and of course, it's so I, heartbreaking. I, you know, I always think about it. Why didn't I go to Texas? I wish I was there to save him, but he shouldn't have needed it. What would you say to Eric K if you had a chance to speak to him? Through this entire three years, he's deflected. He's not taking responsibility. And the fact that he speaks what he spoke about myself, my family, my son, it's, it's unacceptable. Kay apologizing for those comments in court. His attorney says he plans to appeal. During Kay's trial, five other major league players testified that he provided them with opioids. There's a chance that they could have gotten a lace pill and could have also lost their life. So it's, it's, it's pretty hurtful. The Skaggs family has filed suit against Kay and the Angels, claiming the team knew or should have known Kay was a drug user. In a statement to ABC News, the Angels called Tyler's death a tragedy, adding, the Angels strongly dispute the claims made by the family in their lawsuit and will defend the organization in court. Fentanyl is up to 50 times stronger than heroin and 100 times stronger than morphine. Last year, more than 71,000 overdose deaths were linked with synthetic opioids like fentanyl. We're fortunate because we can hold somebody accountable for our son's death, and, um, and a lot of people aren't able to do that right now um, with this fentanyl crisis. I miss Tyler so much. He was my, he was my only son, and, you know, I'm... I'm not going to be a grandma. I'm not going to be able to hold a grandchild. And those things are, are painful. I think about that all the time. I distinctly remember four days before he passed away, we, we talked about it. And um, 
he said, when I get back from Texas. <laughs> so, but, We're going to plan a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he would have made an amazing father. He was so great with kids. And I wonder sometimes if I'll ever be as happy as I, I was. I have a lot of healing to do, you know. I, I have faith that I'll, I'll get there. I know I'm never going to be the same. And, and it's going to be different, but I believe that I can find happiness again. Carly and Debbie are now determined to carry on Tyler's mission with the Tyler Skaggs Foundation, starting a baseball club and giving grants to kids who can't afford to play sports. You're doing a lot of good things in his name. Those are things that Tyler, if he was still here, would probably want to do. Any opportunity I get to speak about Tyler and the incredible person that he was, um, that's what I'm going to do because he deserves it. And the two hope by sharing their story that they can help someone else. His mom told me yesterday, if this saves even just one life, it's worth it, guys. I think they certainly are in talking about this. Eva, thank you so much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.